In this video, we're going to start the CUDA software Infinite Algebra 2 free worksheet, Absolute Value Inequalities. You can find this within the Equations and Inequalities subsection. Let's quickly go over absolute value inequalities. We knew that for an absolute value equation, the absolute value of x equals x and the absolute value of negative x equals x. So in order to solve for this equation, we would split it up into two separate equations. For an absolute value inequalities, however, we're going to be splitting that up into two separate inequalities. So if we have that the absolute value of some variable, let's just say y, is less than some number, we're going to have an and compound inequality. If we have that the absolute value of y is greater than some number, we're going to have an or compound inequality. So knowing that, let's get started with number one. In number one, we have the absolute value of 6n is less than or equal to 18. We have less than or equal to, so we know we're using an and inequality. So let's set up our two separate inequalities. 6n has to be less than or equal to 18. And remember, since we multiply or divide it by a negative, we're going to have to flip the sign. So and 6n is greater than or equal to negative 18. So 6n is less than or equal to 18, and it's greater than or equal to negative 18. So I'm going to divide by 6 when 6n is less than or equal to positive 18 to get that n is less than or equal to 3. And I'm going to have, when I divide both sides by 6, that n is greater than or equal to negative 3. So I can write this as negative 3 is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to 3. And when I graph this, I'll circle, fill in negative 3, circle, fill in positive 3, and shade everything in between. Let's move on to number 2. In number 2, again, we have less than or equal to. So that means that p plus 4 is less than or equal to 8 and, flipping the inequality sign, greater than or equal to negative 8. So this time I'm going to write this as one compound inequality and then solve. I'm going to say that negative 8 is less than or equal to p plus 4, which is less than or equal to 8. Then I'll subtract 4 from the middle, the left, and the right. Whatever I do to the left, I have to do to the right, and I also have to do to the middle. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12, and that's less than or equal to p plus 4 minus 4, which is p, and that is less than or equal to 8 minus 4, which is 4. I have negative 12 is less than or equal to p, and p is less than or equal to 4. Circle the negative 12, fill that in, circle the positive 4, fill that in, and shade everything in between. In number 3, again, I have less than. So that means that m minus 2 is less than 8 and, switching the inequality, is greater than negative 8. So I can set this up as negative 8 is less than m minus 2, which is less than positive 8. Adding 2 to every side, negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6, and that is less than m, which is less than 8 plus 2, which is 10. Negative 6 is less than m, which is less than 10. Circle negative 6, not filling it in. Circle 10, not shading that in, and shading everything in between. In number four, I have another less than or less than or equal to. So this means it's going to be another and compound inequality. So 5x less than or equal to 10 and flipping the inequality greater than or equal to negative 10. So I'll set this up as negative 10 is less than or equal to 5x, which is less than or equal to positive 10. Dividing everything by 5, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2, less than or equal to 5x divided by 5 is x, less than or equal to 10 divided by 5, which is 2. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 2. Circle negative 2, shade that in, circle positive 2, shade that in, and also shade everything in between. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. And number 5, we have our first greater than. 
So this is going to be an or compound inequality. However, first, let's simplify. We're going to do that by subtracting 5 from both sides, because remember, just like when solving absolute value equations, we need to isolate the absolute value. In other words, we need to get the absolute value to one side of the inequality. So I'll get the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 11 minus 5, which is 6. x is my only variable inside. I have that x is greater than or equal to 6, or that x is less than or equal to negative 6. Because remember, I'm flipping that inequality due to multiplying or dividing by a negative. I'm going to circle the 6, fill that in, and shade everything to the right. Then I'm going to circle the negative 6, fill that in, and shade everything to the left. Now let's think about this and double check. We have that the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 6. We know that if we plug in 10, the absolute value of 10 is indeed greater than or equal to 6 because 10 is greater than or equal to 6. Now let's pick another point where we shade it in, negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8 is also greater than or equal to 6 because 8 is greater than or equal to 6 and the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. Therefore you can see that what we've graphed in number 5 is true. Moving on to number 6, we have the absolute value of m minus 2 is greater than 0. Again, I have a greater than inequality, so that means that this is going to be an or compound inequality. I'll start by adding 2 to both sides to get that the absolute value of m is greater than 0 plus 2, which is 2. And from that we can say that m is greater than 2, or flipping the inequality, m is less than negative 2. Circle 2, not filling that in and shading everything to the right, and circling negative 2, not filling that in and shading everything to the left. m is greater than 2, or m is less than negative 2. In number 7, we have greater than, so we know that this is going to be an or compound inequality. I'm going to start by adding 3 to both sides. And doing this, I'll isolate my absolute value of r, and that's going to be greater than 2 plus 3, which is 5. That means that r is greater than 5, or my variable r is less than negative 5. Circling 5, shading everything to the right, however, not filling in the circle, then circling negative 5, not filling in that circle, and shading everything to the left. And number 8, again, greater than or equal to, so this is going to be an or compound inequality. I'll start by subtracting 2 from both sides. I'll get that the absolute value of n is greater than or equal to 5 minus 2, which is 3. That means that that value n is either greater than or equal to 3, or that n is less than or equal to negative 3 when we switch the sign. So n is greater than or equal to 3, or n is less than or equal to negative 3. Circling 3, filling that in, shading everything to the right, circling negative 3, shading that in, and shading everything to the left. And number 9, I'm back to a less than inequality. So this is going to be and. I'll start by simplifying. I'll add 5 to both sides. That will help me isolate the absolute value. So I have the absolute value of x minus 2, and that's going to be less than negative 2 plus 5, which is positive 3. So that means that this x minus 2 is less than 3, and it's greater than negative 3. So I'll set this up as one compound inequality. Negative 3 is less than x minus 2, which is less than 3. I'll add 2 to every side, middle, left and right, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, and that is less than x minus 2 plus 2, which is x, and x is less than 3 plus 2, which is 5. Negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 5. Circling negative 1, circling 5, and cheating everything in between. And lastly in this video, we'll go over number 10. However, before I work through this problem, 
please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All likes and subscriptions are greatly appreciated and they let me know that you are finding these videos helpful. So back to number 10. We need to isolate that absolute value. We're going to do that by adding three to both sides. So the absolute value of x minus four is less than five plus three, which is eight. This is a less than inequality, so we know that it's going to be and. x minus four has to be less than eight, and it has to be greater than negative eight. So I'm going to set this up as one compound inequality. Negative eight is less than x minus four, which is less than eight. I'm going to add four to every side. Negative eight plus four is negative four, and that is less than x, which is less than eight plus four, which is 12. Negative four is less than x, and x is less than 12. Circle a negative four, not filling it in. Circle the 12, not filling that in, and shade everything in between. That is our solution for number 10. Join me in the next video where I'll work through problems number 11 through 18. And like I said before, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below.